I was born a free man. Lived with my family in New York till the day I was deceived. To Solomon. Kidnapped. Sold into slavery. I will survive. I will not fall into despair. I will keep myself hardy till freedom is opportune. The condition of your laborers, it's all wrong. They're my property. You say that with pride. I say it as fact. Speak! Man does how he pleases with his property. You come here. Mr. I said come here! If I was a free man, I'm not a slave. Being in Louisiana in those plantations was strange, just because these were the locations that that narrative actually happened. You know, the trees are just this sort of contorted limbs, twisted, sort of draped Spanish moss, sort of, you know, blowing in the wind. It's very fairy tale like. Um, and the, this, this landscape is the, the, the location of many horrible things which are witnessed by those trees and those houses. I mean, you know, this, we were working in actual plantations. Um, and that sort of raised everyone's game. I mean, the actors being in that location where things actually occurred was very inspiring. It was like dancing with ghosts. Who were your master? Master named Freeman. Was he a learned man? I suppose so. He learned you to read? A word here or there. But I have no understanding of the written text. Don't trouble yourself with it. Same as the rest, Master bought you here to work, that's all. Any more, I'll earn you a hundred lashes. So I was tussling uh, with developing the script, and uh, my wife said to me, why don't you look into two accounts of slavery? And then I thought to myself, of course, and she, she being a historian, and we both did our research, and she came up with this book called 12 Years a Slave. And it was kind of weird, it was strange, because when I opened the pages of the book, each turn of the page was a revelation in a way. And when I shut the book, um, I was kind of annoyed and angry at myself because I didn't know the book. But then I found out that no one else knew the book neither. So that became my, it became my passion to make this book into a film. It was a very clear tale of, um, of, a, of, a, of a person's struggle with, um, with, first of all, a kind of battle for their freedom and then a battle for, to maintain their own mind. And I thought it was, a genuinely beautifully written book and I understood that actually I didn't have to worry about any of the rest of it all I had to be concerned about or think about was connecting to this man this really I think very remarkable individual I had a situation here where I had my idea and I had a, a book that completely matched it but had all the detail all the sort of minute microscopic sort of descriptions of what slavery was and in done in such a new, new, nuanced way with such a humanity that it was just overwhelming overpowering days ago I was with my family in my home now you tell me all is lost Tell no one who I am. That's the way to survive. Well, I don't want to survive. I want to live. When you have the script and you go to location, you throw it away because everything's different to how you were writing it in you know, Amsterdam and, and New York. I mean, it's become a situation where it becomes um, a thing where it allows you to get the money to make the movie but then you got to sort of almost um, rewrite it again because you, you're actually in the actual location. Things change, things alter. Our first day was, you know, 108 degrees, you know, Fahrenheit outside and, and a cotton plantation with high humidity and an impossible, you know, it was actually just sort of impossible to think about anything in terms of, you know, well, how was I planning to do the character at this point? You know, you're just, you're kind of battling the elements, but you're, you're so deep down, in a way, you're so deep down the rabbit hole by that point, you know, that you are, that you can just exp you hopefully can ju just express the character and uh, and what you what you felt about the character and what you saw in the character. They're worse than cattle, and they're treated worse than cattle, and that's what they were. I mean, they weren't even regarded as human beings. So it's, uh, you can look at sort of the um, industrial sort of um, you know mechanism of slavery. I mean, in the background, in all the scenes, you're looking at cotton, you're looking at cane, and you're looking at uh, um, a timber. That's what slavery was about. You know, you know free labor money, you know, economics. It's, 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 it's the thing that built America. I thought I told you to commence to putting on clappers. Yes, Master, I'm about it. These have all been replaced. 
Well, didn't I tell you to get a keg of nails? And so I did. So you did. God damn you, I thought you knowed something. I did as instructed. If there's something wrong, it's wrong with the instruction. Stuart Hill had become, he had become Simon Northup. He had become, at that time, a sphere where wherever he rolled, whatever he did was correct. And that's what you want from an actor after a while. You know, them to, to, to let go of your hand, of course, and walk. And that's what he did. And he, he, by that time, he was in it. So whatever he did was correct. And just by pointing a camera at him for like an hour, a, a minute and a half, or how long ever it is, you get everything. Um, you know, it's, it, was, it was amazing. My back is thick with scars for protesting my freedom. Do not accuse me. I accuse you of nothing. One of the great things I think about having a filmmaker that you can completely rely on to, to capture everything and to, and to see everything is that you don't have to, you don't have to raise that question, you know, oh, are you going to come around from there? Because actually I was doing really something that was, you know, uh, you know, that he's kind of completely aware of all of those, those elements and you just, you know, you're free to just get on with what you're trying to do. What'd you just now tell her? What'd you say to Pets? No words were spoken on a consequence? You're a liar. You're a damn liar. I saw you talking with him. Tell me. Can I speak of what did not occur? Oh, class, black, bro! It was a great advantage to me to be able to see how uh, how Michael and Steve kind of worked together. Um, and and wanting to sort of keep a distance from that initially, actually, and just kind of sort of, I think, understand their language and and where I was the same and where I was different. I think for Steve as well, it was useful for him to be with Michael in the, in the beginning and with the knowledge that, you know, myself and him would be going on this completely, this different journey with the, with the, with the film, ultimately. You stay away from Pat's boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I have a little bit of sympathy for Phelps. I mean, I, you know, he does horrible, vile, and disgusting things, but he's still a human being. And I think that's what's very important. That's what I mean by not judging to some extent. But at the, at the same time, you know, you know he's, a, he's a vile person, but one has to understand why. You know how how is he you know how is he made up why is he like that it's very important to find out sort of and to grapple with that because you know as much as we want to call him a sort of a, a devil or a, 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 a monster he's not he's a, he's, a, he's a human being and unless you can understand why people do things you know we just go around and around and around in a circle so it's very important for me to understand of where this guy's coming from. I mean, for example, you know he is in love with Patsy, but of course she's not in love with him she she hates him. But he doesn't understand why he, as a, a slave owner, is in love with this is, is in love with this slave. He doesn't understand it, and um, he just he tries to destroy his love for her through you know uh, just trying to by, by by destroying her. Five hundred pounds of cotton, day in, day out, more than any man here, and for that I will be clean. That's all I ask. What happens behind the camera has to be as important as what happens in front of the camera for me. And that's how you get the performance, that's how you get the, the family, that's how you get the unit. People, you know, people are sensitive. They understand, they smell what's going on. And if, 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 if they seem to feel that, that you know, they're in an environment which is just a job, well then, you know, well, 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 I'll just do that much, I won't do that much, I'll just do that much. We're filmmakers trying to make something um, which we, we feel um, could have some you know, power, uh, could have some importance. And w once you've got that environment, then, you know, sky's the limit. Things happen, you know, magic happens. It's like having, you know, bashing two stones together and making fire. Stuff happens. And, you know, you just hope, hope you've got a camera rolling when it does. That's all.